Water is a familiar substance in all three physical states, solid, liquid, and gas. On Earth, water is by far the most abundant liquid. Oceans, rivers, and lakes cover about 75% of Earth's surface. Significant quantities of water are also froze, uh, frozen in glaciers. Water is an essential component of all organisms. 70% to 90% of the mass of living things is water. The chemical reactions of most life processes take place in water, and water is frequently a reactant or product in such reactions. In order to better understand the importance of water, let us take a closer look at its structure and its properties. First main idea. The properties of water in all phases are determined by its structure. Water molecules consist of two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen, united by polar covalent bonds. Research shows that a water molecule is bent. The structure can be represented as follows. The angle between the two hydrogen-oxygen bonds is about 105 degrees. This is close to the expected angle for an sp3 hybridization in the oxygen atom orbitals. The molecules in solid or liquid water are linked by hydrogen bonding. The number of linked molecules decreases with increasing temperature because Increases in kinetic energy make hydrogen bond formation difficult. Nevertheless, there are usually from four to eight molecules per group in liquid water, as is demonstrated on the right of your screen here. If it were not for these molecular groups, water would be a gas at room temperature. Nonpolar molecules, such as methane, which is CH4, that are similar in size and mass to water molecules do not undergo hydrogen bonding. Such substances are gases at room temperature. Ice consists of water molecules in the hexagonal arrangement shown on the right of your screen here. The empty spaces between the molecules in this pattern account for the relatively low density of ice. As ice is heated, the increased energy of the molecules cause them to move and vibrate more vigorously. And when the melting point is reached, the energy of the molecules is so great that the rigid open structure of the ice crystals breaks down and it turns ice into liquid water. Both of the figures on your screen also show that the hydrogen bonds between molecules of liquid water at zero degrees Celsius are fewer and more disordered than those between molecules of ice at the same temperature. Because the rigid, open structure of ice is broken down, water molecules can crowd closer together. Thus, liquid water is denser than ice. As the liquid water is warmed to zero degrees Celsius, or sorry, from zero degrees Celsius, the water molecules crowd closer together. Water molecules are tightly packed as possible at 3.98 degrees Celsius. At temperatures above 3.98 degrees Celsius, the increasing kinetic energy of the water molecules causes them to overcome molecular attractions. The molecules move farther apart as the temperature continues to rise. As the temperature approaches the boiling point, Groups of liquid water molecules absorb enough energy to break up into separate molecules. Because the hydrogen bonding between water molecules, a high kinetic energy is needed, causing water's boiling point to be relatively high, which you know as 100 degrees Celsius, which is high compared to other liquids that have similar molar masses. Second main idea. The molar enthalpy of water determines many of its physical characteristics. At room temperature, pure liquid water is transparent, odorless, tasteless, and almost colorless. Any observable odor or taste is caused by impurities, such as dissolved minerals, other liquids, or gases. 
As shown in the phase diagram of water on your screen here, water freezes and melts at zero degrees Celsius at a pressure of one atmosphere, or 101.3 kilopascals. The molar enthalpy of fusion of ice is 6.009 kilojoules per mole. That value is relatively large compared with the molar enthalpy of fusion of other solids. As you have read, water has the unusual property of expanding in volume as it freezes because its molecules form an open, rigid structure. As a result, ice at zero degrees Celsius, <coughs> zero degrees Celsius has a density of only about 0.917 grams per cubic centimeter. But liquid water at zero degrees Celsius has a density of 0.99984 grams per cubic centimeter. This lower density explains why ice floats in liquid water. The insulating effect of floating ice is particularly important in the case of large bodies of water. If ice were more dense than liquid water, it would sink to the bottom of lakes and ponds, where it would be less likely to melt completely. The water of such bodies of water in temperate climates would eventually freeze solid, killing nearly all living things in it. At a pressure of one atmosphere, again, 101.3 kilopascals, water boils at 100 degrees Celsius. At this temperature, water's molar enthalpy of vaporization is 40.79 kilojoules per mole. Both the boiling point and the molar enthalpy of vaporization of water are quite high compared with those of nonpolar substances of comparable molecular mass, such as methane. The values are high because the strong hydrogen bonding that must be overcome for boiling to occur. The high molar enthalpy of vaporization makes water useful for household steam heating systems. The steam, which is, again, vaporized water, stores a great deal of energy as heat. When the steam condenses in radiators, great quantities of energy are released. In living organisms, the high molar enthalpy of vaporization helps them to resist dehydration when sources of water intake are restricted and provides a large degree of evaporative cooling to carry excess heat away from their bodies. This property especially allows warm-blooded organisms to better regulate their internal temperatures, reduce cell death from water loss, and maintain homeostasis. Third main idea. Water plays a unique role in chemical and biological systems. Potentially later in this course, you will learn about some complex molecules that make life on Earth possible. As important as proteins, carbohydrates, and DNA are, life as we now know it would be impossible without water. For such a small molecule, water plays a large role in biological systems. All of the water's physical and chemical properties make water the perfect substance for supporting life on Earth. Those same properties are also important in determining the unique roles of care, oh, sorry, the unique role of water in chemical systems. Physical properties. Looking at depictions from outer space, like any image that you can get on Google Images, some have described our planet as resembling a big blue marble or a pale blue dot. Earth appears blue because liquid water covers two-thirds of its surface. Water, in fact, is one of the few naturally occurring liquids on this planet. Not only that, but water also is the only substance that occurs naturally in all three common physical states, solid liquid gas, on Earth's surface. This quality makes possible the water cycle, the natural cycle of evaporation and condensation that carries water from the oceans to the clouds and then to the land. Water's ability to remain in a liquid state under a wide range of temperatures is crucial to life as well. Earth's surface can experience wide fluctuations in temperature without the oceans freezing or boiling. 
In addition, the high specific heat capacity of water makes the oceans a climate moderator. Because a large quantity of energy as heat is required to raise the temperature of water, which is what we mean when we say high specific heat capacity, the oceans warm and cool more slowly than land areas. As a result, coastal areas have warmer winters and cooler summers than areas farther inland. Ocean currents also transport warm water from tropical regions toward the poles and transport cool water in the opposite direction. This redistribution of energy as heat also has a moderating effect on climate. But as you've learned previously, perhaps water's most impressive property is that its volume increases as it freezes. Ice, therefore, floats on liquid water. This property prevents the millions of organisms that live in water from perishing in winter. Water's role in biological systems. Water dissolves many substances, especially polar molecules and ionic substances. So, water plays a vital role in living systems. For example, most of the chemical reactions essential to life take place in aqueous solutions within the cells of organisms. Also, some compounds known as electrolytes break apart to form ions that play key roles in biological functions. For example, sodium and potassium ions are used by complex animals to regulate processes such as muscle function. Many sports drinks, like Gatorade or Powerade, claim to replenish electrolytes. The fact that water is such a powerful solvent also contributes to its role as a transport medium in living things. Water provides organisms with a way to transport materials into and out of cells that need them. In the human body, for example, blood consists of materials suspended in plasma, which is a clear fluid that is about 90% water. Many substances dissolve in plasma and can be transported throughout the body. Plants also use water to transport nutrients through their vascular systems. Finally, water itself participates in many biochemical reactions. Along with carbon dioxide from the air, water is an essential reactant of photosynthesis, the process by which plants convert energy from the sun into chemical energy that organisms can use. Water also participates in reactions that assemble molecules from energy storage and disassemble them when they are needed for uh, fuel cell processes. Water's role in chemical systems. A chemical system is any group of substances that is studied to see what the inputs, outputs, and reactions among the components are. Because of its unique properties, water plays an important role in chemical systems in both the natural world and the designed world. Water's properties as a solvent make our oceans salty, enable geometric, uh, sorry, geochemical cycles uh, to move substances around Earth, and enable water to shape Earth's surface as water dissolves and deposits minerals. Water is used as a coolant in power plants because of water's high specific heat capacity, which allows it to absorb a lot of heat from other sources. The participation of water in reactions is also important in many chemical systems. For example, the reaction of water and carbon dioxide to form carbonic acid is critical to the pH and the chemistry of the oceans and atmosphere. At this point, you should be able to describe the structure of a water molecule Discuss the physical properties of water, as well as explain how they are determined by the structure of water. And calculate the amount of energy absorbed or released when a quantity of water changes.